Just a heads up, this video is going to be for technical analysts. It's going to be at the intermediate to advanced level. So if it doesn't make sense, just bear with me or hop on the Discord and ask questions. What are you even looking at right now? <laughs> well, in green, I have SPY, the ETF for the S&P 500 index. And in purple, I have another financial instrument. It's an ETF and it's called SPXU. It runs inversely to SPY. So that might seem kind of weird, but if you've watched The Big Short, you understand that financial instruments can be created out of nothing and suddenly they have value with the capital that started the fund and then you, the trading begins. And that's kind of where I'm at. I'm watching one of these financial instruments and its performance relative to the S&P 500. And what I'm seeing is pretty interesting. You're gonna notice that I have the S&P uh, 500 high or SPY is high in a green dash line, SPXU's low in a purple line, and a whole bunch of like lines. So let's just start going through this. I want to start at the bottom actually. I have yellow, blue, and white in my typical style, yellow, blue, and then white in terms of uh, degree size. And if you're wondering why I use these colors, part of it was they're easy to find on the menu in Thinkorswim, but also these are the Argentine flag colors. Yes. Let's go. What are you looking at? A correlation between SPY and SPXU in the positive side means that the two have become divergent because SPXU is supposed to be the inverse of SPY. Okay. So here, a positive in correlation is actually a divergence because it's already supposed to be inverted. So positive plus a negative equals a negative. This is why I'm saying this is like advanced technical stuff because the, rel the, the, the degree of relativity is about to compound. <laughs> there is some interesting things to be said about when the 200 period and the 100 period average cross. There's typically a counter trend. You might be able to see that here. You may be able to see that again over here. Counter trends tend to start where that thing flips. It's really interesting. I'm trying to figure out if I can use the 20 period average to kind of signal those things because it starts with yellow, blue, white yellow, blue, white, coming up and setting high, yellow, high, blue, high, white, high, right? So, and then that counter trend started right there and then we got a big dump. <laughs> so it's not like super useful. It's curious though to, to observe that. Moving on from there, um, whoops, I'm not supposed to be moving this. You're gonna see that the divergence has increased, okay? A 33.8% correlation is an increase in divergence. It's a 33.8% of divergence with, over the 200 period average which means that SPXU is not moving against SPY as it theoretically should be, which means that either SPY is overbought compared to SPXU or SPXU is oversold compared to SPY. <laughs> which is it, which is which? It's hard to say. I want to draw some attention to where the divergence became really acute, and that is between the June of 2022 and the October of 2022 lows in SPY, because you had a lower low in SPY, but SPXU failed to set a higher high. That starts the divergence right there. That's probably where most of it comes from is between those two things. And you're going to see a cross through here. I am supposing that we could be in a giant price mirror. And Really quickly, I just want to note that if we are in a price mirror, we are at uh, the 2021 low point on the, on the other side. And so from here, we'd be looking for a steady uptrend or a move higher. Again, price mirrors, look it up on Bukowski's website, pirates.com. They're pretty unpredictable. It's hard to know if you're in a price mirror. It's really hard because by the time you realize it, it's already over. So I've realized it. It's probably over, but I don't. I don't have a lot of faith in this rally, although it really could continue to like 447, I think, is the, the symmetrical triangle target. It's a symmetrical triangle through here. And if you've seen my analysis, go to my past videos, you'll see that I, I had a bullish and bearish target for that symmetrical triangle, and it looks like we have an upward breakout. So the rally could go on for a while. And I'm interested in knowing what's gonna happen to SPXU during that time because of this divergence. You're gonna notice that SPY is, making, is moving further and further away from its all-time high. And because SPXU is supposed to be the inverse of that, then the price of SPXU should be moving further and further from its low. But it's not. <laughs> it's not. In fact, it is below the peak, or below its last valley in around August of 2022, which is the peak in SPY. 
And that is nuts because the current price SPY, it has not gotten there yet. So this makes me think SPXU is oversold and it's more likely that SPXU is oversold than SPY is overbought in relationship to each other. SPXU should be much higher than it is if it actually is inverted to SPY. Very curious stuff. I'm gonna move on to some technical analysis now about SPXU in that thought because for this divergence to correct itself, SPXU is gonna to have to make relatively larger moves against SPY's downtrends or SPY is gonna to have to make smaller uptrends, no, smaller uptrends against S SPXU's downtrends. Does that make sense? It doesn't really matter. It's in XPXU's favor, I believe, even if Spy continues to run. I want to just say really quick, before we get into the technical analysis here, that 1219 level is critical. Everything I say about SPXU will be totally irrelevant if the price falls below 1219. All right, let's go into SPXU. I'm going to load some different styles here and charts and stuff. If you don't use Thinkorswim, I love Thinkorswim. I'm just going to start clicking around here. And maybe I even show how I do this because it's kind of cool, right? Um, what's next? Studies? Did I load the study set? Standard? There we go. Okay. Giving myself a little more time frame here too. Let's go to 360 days. This is the price. This is the price mirror right here. I believe what we saw from the low in 2021 is a leading diagonal triangle. I think this is an actionary wave. I think it's motive in nature and that the price action from that point in time has been a flat correction. And as long as that correction doesn't take out the low, we're in business. And the next move would be the third wave in a motive wave, which is often the biggest wave. It is generally at least as big as or as high as, as tall as that first wave, which was pretty significant, right? We're talking from a bottom of like 12 up to like 22. So, hey, a $10 rally in SPXU would be cool, right? So this might look really complicated, and this is why I said this is going to be like a more technically advanced video, because there's just a lot shown here. There's a overlap between the first and fourth wave of this triangle. And that's why I'm calling it a leading diagonal triangle. And no, the price did not go crazy and set a higher high, but price has to enter retracements. And I think a flat here is really appropriate because flats typically are, are followed by large moves. And this has been a particularly strong corrective pattern in that S SPXU is now oversold to SPY. So you have a flat suggesting a big price move ahead. Meanwhile, the price of the instrument is oversold. This tells me that this thing could explode. And I mean, really explode. Completing the zigzag most recently, um, I feel like I had a target somewhere. Here we go. And I'm using a smaller time frame to find the end of this particular wave. I took, and this is where fractaling comes in. You're going to see another A, B, C zigzag through here. This time it's shown in white. And once again, we have uh, an, an, an ending diagonal triangle here. I believe waves one and four through here overlap as well. And here's wave four. So one, two, three, four. Yes, four overlapping. And I guess this would actually be five down here, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and five is overthrowing. So this is an ending diagonal triangle in wave position C of a downtrend. And I think on the larger degree, like maybe three or four degrees larger, we're actually going to see the realization of an uptrend because we had a leading diagonal triangle w on the other chart. So we had a leading diagonal triangle leading into a big flat. That flat is ending, and the very end of this thing is ending in an ending diagonal triangle. It's like, get ready to rumble. It's going to get wild. Buckle up and get some popcorn, because guess what? The stock market crash is still on. <laughs> so yeah, the target for the zigzag was 13.24. The price has just recently bottomed at 12.85. It looks like we have a push higher, at least on this time frame at 15 minutes. The RSI is extremely oversold extremely oversold. 
moving back into the hour time frame, uh, again, you're going to see that oversold condition. Volume starting to pick up with implied volatility. So I think that we really are at the end of a big corrective cycle in SPY and possibly even in SPY. And we're about to start seeing the next actionary waves of the prevailing downtrend, which is down. So this was a complicated video. It's about SPY and SPXU. That's my theory. That's where I'm going. So I'm just going to start going long in SPXU, getting away from the contracts as much as I can because I'm kind of done gambling on the market. Like it's fun, but it's also like really sucks to lose. <laughs> that last rally just really wiped me out. Well, it didn't wipe me out, but you know, not pleasant, not a pleasant experience. So I'm going to start buying shares and just holding that SPXU. Here we go.